Your talk yesterday was fantastic, and um, I'm just wondering if you could just pull out the three key points for us that you were sure. covering. Well, I think it's important to realize that many people are going to be surviving cancer, in fact, millions now in the UK. And uh, if we don't think at the very beginning of treatment what that survivorship trajectory is going to be or that post-treatment trajectory is going to be, we may not uh, give them the greatest opportunities to have high quality of life during that time. So from the very beginning, we think, need to think about people as being survivors. We need to preserve fertility. We need to give drugs that are going to be uh, effective but not toxic to the heart, the lungs, other parts of the body. And we need to then give patients and their GPs information about what they can do to maximize their health and recovery after cancer treatment. And who do you think is best placed to do that? Well, I think it has to be a partnership. Uh, and the partnership is actually a three-way partnership. It's between the treating oncology specialist, that team, the patient, and the GP. Uh, because all of them have different uh, pieces of expertise. And uh, to share information and to chart that journey is uh, a collaboration. And is the biggest challenge the patients or the, or the medical profession? I think the medical profession is uh, the biggest challenge because we're not used to actually sharing and coordinating care in that way and the patient is often left out in the dark. Yeah. And is this a training issue, do you think? Yes, I, I think training and uh, changes in expectations. Uh, I think uh, the expectation now is that the cancer patient is going to stay with that cancer specialist, maybe eventually be turned over uh, to the GP. Uh, the GP's kind of been left out in the dark mm -hmm. while the patient's getting treatment. And we need to, to basically see the patient in the center of all of this. I think patient-centered care is really what's driving this. And if we want the best for the patient, the health professionals have to work together. Mm. And, and from where you sit, how would we go about um, empowering patients to take action? Well, I've been working at this now for about five or six years in the states trying to disseminate the uh, key recommendations of the Institute of Medicine report that I talked about. And uh, we've tried to actually ask patients to ask their doctors for a treatment summary and care plan, but they are uh, pretty timid about doing mm -hmm. it, even empowered patients. And it's like a lot of other things, if the doctor initiates it, it's a lot easier. So we are hoping that healthcare systems will see this as a mechanism of better coordinating care and uh, perhaps reimburse the oncology physicians a little bit more for taking the time to do that. Mm -hmm. In the States, uh, we're actually uh, looking a lot towards nurses who work with physicians mm -hmm. to actually do this, to, to prepare the treatment summary and to do the post-treatment survivorship care plan. Um, but it can be done by anyone. I think it's recognizing that there are long-term effects from the cancer treatment and that there are things that the patient can do to improve their health and prevent recurrence. Mm. And if the patient doesn't know what they can do and their GP doesn't know uh, what can be done for them, it will not necessarily happen. Mm -hmm. And I think prevention is a big issue mm -hmm. for secondary cancers, isn't yes. it? People don't tend to talk about that. Prevention, you know, you think, oh, I've had cancer and I'm only worried about the cancer coming back. But um, as I mentioned, about 15% of all new cancers are in people who've had a prior cancer. So mm -hmm. a second breast cancer, a mm -hmm. second colon cancer, a second tobacco-related mm -hmm. cancer. And anything we can do to change risks for those cancers coming, mm -hmm. so uh, maintaining normal body weight, physical activity, um, prevention of uh, continuing to smoke and drink may be problems in terms of uh, cancer, new cancers and cancer recurrence. Mm. And those messages certainly haven't got out to patients, have they? No, you know, many patients think, oh, if I'm overweight, I've got that reserve, I'm not going to, yeah. you know, have that problem again. But in fact, that's our biggest enemy, obesity and, and physical inactivity. Yeah. And so I guess prevention starts at birth really doesn't it right the way Preven through. Yeah, prevention <laughs> it should be really a public health societal goal and the, the nice thing is that when you think about other campaigns against other chronic diseases like heart disease and diabetes all of the things that we're recommending for the cancer patient and survivor are really the same so that the benefits are going to be uh, multiplied in terms of reducing risk for other chronic conditions. Mm. 
And I think through your talk last night, you've certainly inspired a lot of patients mm -hmm. to, to go forth, and that's fantastic. Mm, yeah, well, we, we, I think empowering the patient, uh, making them feel that they can do something, because uh, so often uh, they feel that the medical system has abandoned them. You know, they're not interested because there's no active treatment that needs to be done. And, uh, and in fact, there are many active things that we can do to uh, support our patients. Mm. So.